Hey everyone, welcome to my very first ever Twitch stream. Not just talking Jow, but literally at all. I've actually had very little exposure to Twitch so far. I uh, mostly have watched it for inspiration in creative type games like uh, Planet Coaster or Parkitect or City Skylines. But I am going to branch out and try try something new and weird and show off one of my favorite new games. It's Jow. It is a web-based professional wrestling booking game. Now, if you're not familiar with the genre, uh, the most famous uh, line, a game in the genre is Total Extreme Warfare. It's a game about booking wrestling matches, um, picking the storylines, the, the w winners, the losers, uh, the making the titles, the shows, all those things. So this is a new one. Uh, it's being made by a, uh, a single guy on, his name is Mahin on the Jow Discard, Discord. And he is um, a r incredibly cool guy, really easy guy to, to talk with and really easy guy to root for uh, when you talk to him on the Discord. Uh, I highly recommend if you have any interest or you think you might have any interest in in this game, by all means, please go check out uh, check it out. You can play it seriously right now for free without any obligation of any kind. Uh, no try. It's just unlimited trial. You, it's it's seriously fantastic. Um, the website's journeyofwrestling.com and the link is well, I couldn't figure out how to make a link, so just type in journeyofwrestling.com in uh, in your url uh, browser and in your browser and you'll you'll find it so um well shoot let's get started so i have been creating a scenario over the course of my time with this game called wcw 2000 march 27 2001 the day after uh if you are not familiar it is uh the day that shane mcmahon or the w WWE did a buyout of WCW and they did the final episode of Monday Nitro. On that episode, Shane McMahon appeared and said that the name did have McMahon on the contracts, but it was Shane McMahon's name and not Vince's. So the rest of this scenario takes place in a theoretical alternate reality where uh, the next day, you take over the company, I guess, as Shane McMahon, and you are trying to decide where, how are you going to compete with your father's company, WWE? So this is the scenario. It's, um, I've been working on it for quite a while. You can see I have 51 updates, um, and uh, I, I think it's pretty fully featured, if I do say so myself. Uh, I've modeled, I've designed the game to be WCW focused, but it is a game that you can play. You can you can set the WWE as a starting company, and it's actually maybe even a little bit more robust uh, of an experience because uh, the WWE had a hell of a lot more future star information I was able to add. Whereas on the WCW side, I had to get a little bit more creative. Which, uh, if this live stream goes well, I mean, hell, you'll see a little bit for yourself. So. Um, even though the game does start uh, the day after in 2001, in March 2001, we're actually going to pick up about two years later just because I've already started a game. Uh, I started a game a few, a couple weeks ago, about a week ago, and I don't really want to restart it, uh, especially since approximately zero people will see this live stream. So we're just going to pick up from here, and I'll tell you what you need to know so far and what's going on. So let's do a quick little view of our company right now this is our roster uh sting is currently the world heavyweight champion alex wright is our united states champion the boogie knights are our tag team champions the boogie knights are uh well let's see i can't remember the boogie knights are disco inferno and alex wright that's right i remember now uh sugar shane helms is currently our cruiserweight title and chavo guerrero jr uh, just claimed the Monday Nitro title, which is basically the rebranded television title. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the TV title uh, branding, 
Um, so this is the same concept. It's a low-level weekly show type of title. So the, the people who are theoretically attending this show are getting a, getting a title about uh, more often than not. Uh, here's a quick look at our main eventers. We got Hollywood Hulk Hogan. He's only got one appearance left in this year's contract. Uh, Rick Flair, uh, Bill Goldberg, Diamond Dallas Page, Booker T, Sting, Kevin Nash, Scott Steiner, Kurt Henning, Jeff Jarrett, Bret Hart, Scott Hall, Lex Luger, and Lance Storm. Now, not all of these start the scenario uh, in this position. Uh, based on my previous booking, uh, Kurt Henning has been elevated a little bit. Uh, Lance Storm has been elevated a little bit. Diamond Dallas Page has, has, gone, has been elevated a little bit. How uh, Journey of Wrestling works is it will kind of rank people here by the popularity. So you can see that up here, right now, Hollywood Hulk Hogan is my... Uh, is my most popular star overall and Ric Flair after him Bill Goldberg etc the little star means that they are uh, faces of the franchise so over the course of the game more and more people will be more closely associated with your company and they get these stars as, re as a result um, so if we dial we're not going to go into each one but if you dial in you see you can uh, you you can see the current popularity uh, the current uh, alignment. So in this case, Hulk Hogan is in a heel phase. So he is uh, the bad guy here. He's been a heel for 18 months. So he might be getting, coming up for a, a good face run at this point. Uh, he's age 49, which is, uh, I think, give or take a year, correct, uh, for 2002. Some of that information was a little bit harder to track, but I tried to keep everybody within a year uh, difference. Um, uh, this is the amount of appearances your temporary workers can can uh, appear. Right now, I only have, like I said earlier, the one appearance left for Hulk Hogan this year. Uh, it's you actually get a few more each year. Um, I just have recently run Hulk Hogan through a feud here, so. Uh, but this shows you how much, uh, and then you, they can come out for storyline segments, but they don't actually count against their appearance, appearances until they're in matches. So you really get a chance to, um, to, to build the story before you have your payoff match. Even now, if one, with one appearance, I could build, book something fairly interesting with Hulk Hogan. Uh, here's his gender. He is male. Uh, and the current overrating... Uh, it, it can actually go past 100, but anytime you don't use them after 100, you will slowly start to go back down to 100. Um, you can see he's at 99 right now, so he's pretty over with the crowd. And uh, these are his work ratings. At this point, 49-year-old Hulk Hogan has lost a lot of his, maneuver, his, his viability and a lot of his um, work working uh, ability. So he's, he is actually a one-star worker. His overness is boosting him as if he's a two-star. That's why this is a different color here. And uh, you're seeing similar things over here. He had a, he started the game at a three-star charisma rating, and uh, and he's getting credit for a fourth, again, because of his overness rating. Uh, he's hit his max uh, rating. But theoretically, he could, given enough matches, improve his work rating. Now, he's too temporary to probably do that, so that I don't expect to see that happen, but... Uh, over here is the gimmicks. Um, the uh, This is his current gimmick. It's just a, a one that I started the game with for him, uh, generic. He is the icon of, uh, of WCW at this point. So, uh, And mark out means it's at its highest rating. So he's getting an extra overness boost as a result of his gimmick because his gimmick is being so well received right now with the crowd. Now in this same menu, I could change his gimmick to something else. So if we'll take a look at that for a second, here's the what the gimmick menu looks like. I can change any combination. So I could say he's a big shot. Uh, he's a. We could go on a fate. We could do a face turn, and we could make him a heroic big shot. For instance, I'm not going to do that right now. But no, you can combine, or you could just create your own thing cool guy see he's just you anything you want 
uh, and then once they debut, that's when you get a good sense of whether or not it's working well or not. Ideally, you want at least an average uh, res res uh, response, but um, you know it doesn't always work out that way. Uh, over here, you can also change what his appearance looks like. Um, so you can come in here. Here's the appearance modifier editor. You could we could change him to have any number of these outfits if we wanted. We could we could grow him some nice new hair. <laughs> you know, there's all kinds of different things that you can do. The editor, the the uh, art editor is actually really really fun and really well done. It's one of my favorite parts of the game, and I just hope it keeps getting added to. Uh, but so let's take a step back. I'm just going to quickly kind of zoom through the rest of the roster because I really figure anything beyond main eventer main eventers is just too too low to even really concern ourselves directly with who's on here. Um, you can see uh, Crowbar has made a pretty big jump in my game. He started as a jabroni, but I really had uh, weak talent down in the uh, roster, so I I picked him as my my guy who had enough years left that I figured he was worth pushing up. Uh, so he's been on quite the win streak. Um, one of my personal favorites in this scenario is Ming. I think Ming is really, really fun to book. Uh, he's 43, though, so, I mean, he's he only has, like, a year or two. He Usually in my scenarios, he gets a good, a good like, USA title run, but uh, he, doesn't get, he doesn't get a lot of main event love, in my, uh, in my opinion, in my games. Uh, Sean Stasiak is another one that I, I like to push up. I give him kind of a, I, I just kind of expand upon his prima donna thing that he had in WCW, made him more of a uh, Lex Lugery type character. And uh, in my last generation playthrough of this, he just really, really took off and became my my biggest star. And uh, he's well on his way to becoming a big star again here for me. Uh, the other big push I've been doing is with the the Jung Dragons, uh, Kaz Hayat. <laughs> hey, I'm so sorry. I'm just so bad at at these names. Hey, Hayashi and Young Yang. I should. I better get good at those names. Let's put it that way. Uh, I've pushed them to the moon uh, so far. It's actually been really hard going because they have not. Uh, they have not resonated with my crowd and. It's made it a slow push, but I've I've really really forced them down everybody's throats. They've been the tag team to beat, um, just because I wanted some I wanted to, to to do something interesting. I wanted the challenge of taking them and turning them into the biggest stars. And so at uh, at some point, uh, they're going to become a, a a big thing. In fact, uh, we're going to come back to that in a moment. I'm signing up a lot of Japanese talent because I've recently started to get an appreciation for some of the Japanese workers that I maybe didn't have as much appreciation for when I was uh, a, a kid in the Monday Night War era. So um, I'm, I'm really enjoying a lot of the New Japan Pro Wrestling uh, workers and a lot of like, uh, 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 they, they bring a sense of style and, and, and to it that is just really unmatched. And so I'm, I'm importing that a lot more into this current playthrough. Uh, and you can see a lot of other names that make you go, Ugh, I, I've i got the Kiss Demon. I don't know how many of you remember the Kiss Demon, but uh, they WCW had a Kiss, as in the band Kiss, uh, makeup performer come out and do a lot of things and uh, he wasn't the greatest. Uh, I have Road Warrior Animal who's really old at this point and not not particularly talented at this point. He's not particularly over at this point. It's so like I really the lower levels here you can see there is just oh the talent the talent starts to really drop off a cliff. So we got our work cut out for us. We're gonna have to do some. Uh, we're gonna have to do some good recruiting. We're gonna have to do some good training, and we're gonna have to make some stars. I think. And so uh, I'm up to the challenge, and I think you're up for watching because you're you're here, and you really don't have a choice if you're watching. So uh, I'm going to 
Oh, there is one one extremely talented name that you might might have noticed down here, AJ Styles, who was actually with WCW at the time of them closing. I did not know that until I did the research I needed to do to make my scenario, and I'm sure there are several of you who don't know that or didn't know that. So, um, but he he usually ends up pretty high up on the list because I mean you just he he starts the game with so much extra talent so he's he's going to be he's going to be in good shape. Here's a quick look at our tag teams. I have to reference this a lot because I kind of for, when I'm, uh, I have a tendency to forget who who is who. I also have a little bit of a tendency to be weak with my my tag team bookings, but uh, I'm going to try to do better as part of this stream. So we'll we'll do that. Uh, here's the trios. The trios were part of the last update that just came out last week for Journey of Wrestling. Sorry, not last update, as in the last, but the most recent update of Journey of Wrestling. Uh, it was 1.95. It added trio support and other a few other things uh, that we'll, you'll see eventually. Uh, but so this is the first time we've really had trios. I haven't um, I haven't had a good I haven't had a lot of time to book them yet. So we'll see we'll see how that goes. Here's uh, the current training roster uh the game will periodically uh unlock these people and about twice a year i'll get a chance to recruit one of these randomly uh there's also other ways to recruit them sooner uh but we have not done that we will we'll, we'll have i'll wait and do that on camera when we're ready i have uh, some plans for easy money eventually so uh, this I'll, i might do that as soon as i get the um, artifact for it here's our currently re our current retired uh team here we've got uh, uh we got uh, roddy piper the macho man randy savage hacksaw jim duggan and sid vicious uh the macho man and roddy piper have been inducted into our wcw hall of fame here uh hacksaw jim duggan and sid vicious have not yet um but they were also they were big uh big important parts of the first year or two of our game here so so that's a quick view of our roster uh, I'm going to give you just a quick overview of a few other aspects of the game, and then we'll get into some booking, and uh, we'll 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 just play us by ear. Um, you see, over on the top, uh, over on the left of our screen stream here, I've included a section for our top stars. Um, I can't actually move my screen over my cursor over there, but over here, I've included our top stars. That is just a picture of our stats section over here. The stats section um, will, is a premium feature. If you have the paid version of, of Journey of Wrestling, you get this feature. Otherwise, it's one of the few features that you don't have access to. But here's a quick overview of how it looks. Um, first of all, you can see either you or you can pull up from the drop down your competitor, the WWE in this case. It shows your current iconic wrestlers. These were the most uh, the most popular wrestlers you've ever had. It shows you your current most over star, uh, not to be confused with popularity. In this case, Hulk Hogan is technically more popular, but Sting is getting the bigger, shall we say, overness crowd reactions. So Sting is my most over star right now, and he should be. He just came off a really big win where he won uh, uh, the world championship. So he's he he's earned his his current uh, his current attention our current top heel is hollywood hulk hogan our current top face even though it's sting or even though sting is more over uh bill goldberg is more popular so he's he's at the top he actually just recently lost for the first time in my game uh he for the first year and a half he was was doing the same kind of undefeated streak that he did in wcw but uh, he did finally just lose uh, in my game. So here's a quick overview of the best events we've thrown so far and the, the best matches so far. Here's our best segments and the top feuds. Sting and Kevin Nash had a great feud. Uh, Kevin Nash and Diamond Dallas Page had a great feud. Uh, yeah, there's so many more but they only show the top three you can see where we bump them off pretty regularly with uh with our booking because we 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 book pretty good so here's the top moments we've had so far again this is a situation where there are technically more that have happened these are just the most recent uh 
of recent top moments, uh, like the time Diamond Dallas Page hit Ric Flair off a crossbody off the top of the cage during New Blood Rising 2001. I know, I thought it was great. Kevin Nash jumped off a 20-foot ladder onto Diamond Dallas Page. We're going to try to not laugh too hard at that theoretical scenario. So you can see, it, it, it does a good job of introducing fun moments in your universe. So, uh, last year, we won the event of the year for Starcade 2002 and feud of the year for Kevin Nash versus Sting. We also won the match of the year of Diamond Dallas Page versus Hollywood Hulk Hogan, and Diamond Dallas Page won the match of the year. We're going to skip over all these things that I did poorly because of the lower card talent that is, was not being well received. Um, you can see, obviously, lots more information. We'll eventually go through uh, a little bit more of this as the game progresses, because it's fun to keep to, to go poke at it. And uh, at least once per session, I will come over here and update uh, the top stars with a screenshot of this top section. And so at a very high level, anybody who's popping in should be able to see, oh, well, I see that... Uh, Paul Kogan's the top heel and Bill Goldberg's the top face right now. That, that ought to be interesting. Or, wow, really? More of that? Whatever whatever your case may be. Uh, so here's a current quick overview of the title, title history in our world. Um, I'm not sure why our stream is blacking this out. In, in the actual uh, version of the game, this is uh, white and you can see belt straps on either side. Same thing in the other character creator. Um, it has created a black outline that I don't know what to do with, so uh, you'll have to excuse that. But you can, for any title that you have, you can pull from this drop down and you can see various stats about this. So you can see for the World Heavyweight Championship, the, the big one, the big gold belt, I've had seven title changes uh, and in the average reign has been about 2.3 months. It's actually been really, really short in my game so far, this this playthrough. My last playthroughs have always had uh, some much longer champions, but the stories have just worked out so far that they've just been shorter this time. Our longest reign is with Ric Flair, three months, um, and Sting is our current short, is the shortest, but that's because he literally just won the, the championship uh, on the last pay-per-view. Uh, you can see uh, Goldberg had a nice long run, or, or had a pretty good run um, f with the belt right before Sting. Sting did defeat him cleanly at uh, New Blood Rising. That was more about contracts. I ran out of appearances with Bill Goldberg, so I was going to have to go about nine months with no champion, or I was going to have to vacate the title off screen, and I didn't want to do that. So Sting got a clean victory over Goldberg. And when Goldberg returns, there'll, there'll probably be a rematch of some kind if Sting happens to be champion, but we'll, we'll, we'll take, cross that bridge when it comes. Uh, Kevin Nash was the champion before Goldberg. He was actually slated to hold it a little bit longer, but uh, had an injury that he is still recovering from. Diamond Dallas Page before that. Hulk Hogan had a run before that. DDP again before that. Ric Flair before that. And the game starts with Booker T. Uh, I need to get Booker T in there some more because he's just too talented to not. Um, in this case, he was he was hurt and and it, it was just kind of out of my hands. Uh, I won't go through all the rest of the belts, but you can see the United States champion at a high level. It's moved around a little bit. It looks like uh, Lance Storm has been the big uh, flag bearer of the United States title so championship so far. And the cruiserweight title has uh, has really moved around. Only Sugar Shane Helms has held it more than once. He's the current champion. The tag team belts have really moved because it's been a case where if somebody gets really unhappy, it's pretty easy to make them happy by giving them a title victory for a little bit. So I've used this belt as placating a little bit. I'm going to try to not do that as much. But, you know, when your back's against the wall, you do what you got to do. So the uh, the big the big difference here is again like I mentioned earlier I've been pushing these guys to the moon they've really had a good run here seven months are that's that's good for the longest title reign of any title I believe and then finally the Monday night champion Monday night Nitro champion uh, this one moves around pretty pretty well too uh, you can see nobody's held it more than once so far so 
Um, I'm going to spend one more minute going a little bit more over some of the features of the game real quick, and then we'll dive into, you know what, maybe we'll just start the game. I feel like I've been talking for a long time and not showing you the actual game. So why don't we just go do that? Let's, let's, you can learn later. Learn on your own time. So we are going to go back to the main screen, book a segment. So we've actually already got the last segment I was thinking about booking right here. Um, I, I left it up because I didn't want to forget that I wanted to do this story. So the last, uh, last I left my game, Kaz, Kaz Hayashi and Yang Yang uh, were a tag team. The Young, Dra Young Dragons or Young Dragons? I'm so sorry. I really should look that up. I cannot remember how it's said. But the uh, Young, Young Dragons were the tag team to be in WCW, in my WCW. And I have now gotten to the point where I have given them new gimmicks and they've recently had a string of losses where they have started to maybe not get along so well. So now we are about to see in this, in the tonight's Nitro, September 20, uh, 2002, Kaz Hayashi is going to beat down Young Yang and he's going to turn heel for the first time in his WCW career. Um, so this ought to be a really fun, a fun episode. It's going to set up sto uh, uh, several stories now between them. And if they both, if the feud makes them take off the way I suspect they could, uh, we might be looking at uh, long-term rivalries. And then someday, many years down the road, uh, when they eventually are on the same, the same alignment, being able to get them back together as a tag team is going to provide another really good story beat. So that's kind of the plan with these two. Now, we need to get Sting in something. If you take a look at uh, this section, your feuds are where your currently active feuds are. It shows you the name of the feud. So right now, Hugh Morris and AJ Styles are in a, a feud to decide who the better wrestler is. And uh, it is tanking horribly because uh, nobody likes Hugh Morris. And nobody knows AJ Styles, and I have not done a good job of fixing either of those things. So this, the crowd is just giving me the wrong kind of heat here, for sure. Uh, over here, we got all the other the other ones we got going on. Um, I don't, I don't currently have Sting in one because Sting just just uh, won the title from Goldberg, so he just finished one up. Uh, in the last pay-per-view so it's time to get sting out there and and uh, raise some hell so sting is a really strong face at this point i want to book him with a really strong heel hulk hogan's only got the one one match left uh, in this contract cycle so he's not ideal for this uh rick flair is a pretty obvious title or a, a pretty obvious choice but he, he's been in the main event scene pretty frequently in my game. So I could see where the crowd might be at this point trying to decide if they're really interested in seeing another feud with Flair. Even one as classic as a Flair-Sting feud. Uh, DDP doesn't fit the bill because he's a face and I don't really feel like turning him. I think he really shines as a, as a face. Booker T... Again, I don't think he should be a heel. He really shines as a face. And this is uh, uh, not the time to pull him out. Scott Steiner really isn't that at that level. Um, but I really don't have a better option. Jeff Jarrett's Jeff Jarrett's Jeff Jarrett. Look, Jeff Jarrett's not even over. He's he's fifty one percent over. He's he's not the guy right now. Uh, Scott Steiner is at least over, so he he's the obvious choice. Uh, I haven't booked Bret Hart in anything yet. I've been saving him. I could turn he uh, turn Bret Hart heel here, and and book, work something between them. The problem is the feud, the the item where I would the the alignment item, uh, a segment I really need for this. Uh, the the one that would be really good would be vicious beatdown face versus face. And I have already used that here, and I really want to get this story started. So I'm not gonna to Bret Hart yet. Besides, I really I really like Bret Hart more as a face myself. That's a that's a personal preference, but um, Bret Hart will definitely get a good run at some point in this game. Scott Hall's a really good candidate. He's never really he's been a main event star to me, 
both in real life and in these this these this these booking games but it's always hard to see him as the guy the top guy maybe that's a part of all the issues he always had um but there's something about him that uh, just hasn't quite worked for me in the past but you know what there's no time like the present why don't we just try some things uh so there are different segment types. You, these are, you can sort by all. This will literally encompass all of them. These will be ones that have consequences. So every one of these segments, whoops, sorry. Every one of these segments that I book, so let's say we're gonna go with promo battle. Um, every one of the segments and consequences have a potential consequence. So in this case, uh, when I do this, when I book a promo battle, Scott Hall is going to come out and interrupt Sting during one of his promos. And that may create a feud. So I think that's where, uh, that's where probably we'll start with that. Uh, feuds, if they're already in a feud, this gives you uh, some good story segments. Um, these are for things that do aren't feuds. Uh, they're just the one-off stories and fun things these are the silly ones the ones that fit these would fit under other things they just also classify as silly so if you're playing as a more pure uh wrestling promotion like say a new japan pro wrestling style some of the sillier um segments do not resonate well with the audience we're playing for sports entertainment more of a wwe style so we are definitely going to play with the silly ones too because i really i really love mixing and matching and there are not so many segments where we can afford to just be cutting out a bunch anyway so we're going to keep them all and we're going to stay in sports entertainment um alignments these are where you turn neutral people face or heel or turn faces to heel or turn heels to faces or turn people neutral etc all these story segments will do that and these are the different production uh, packages that can be offered. These are the things that your producers uh, do. Uh, staff was currently, was the last thing added during the 1.9 or 1.95 update. And it is been really fun. Let's take a quick look at that. It's been really fun. I have already leveled up my staff a little bit. You can see my producer is, has leveled up. My trainer is about to. These guys level up by just doing their job. So if I send my, my trainer, Schmidt, on training uh, exercises right now, and he's working with Scotty O to make him uh, be a better worker, when he, when he succeeds in doing that, he, he gets a little bit of experience. When he gets enough experience, he levels up. So the same thing here. Scout, I, I'm scouting Roderick Strong. He's in the Indies right now, and I, I'm thinking maybe he would be a good addition to, to the, the WCW squad. Uh, my producers get experience by doing the production items and my doctors get experience by working on hurt, hurt people. You can see there are different facilities. These are the different facility options. We're not going to get too much into that right now just because uh, I have recently updated those and I know I won't need to for a while. So I'll save that for an episode where I need to if that's important. Because again, we should probably just get to the booking. So... I'm going to book Scott Hall and Sting in a fight, no, a promo battle. And I'm making Scott Hall be the main role because he will be the one interrupting Sting. Uh, he's going to be pretty cool about it. He's not going to be come in and, and, you know, make a lot of threats he's just gonna come in and be the the cool hey yo guy so we're gonna go with that's the mid-level intensity there's enough intensity there that uh, tension between them that i can buy a level two intensity but a level three seems like overkill at this point um i think based on the fact that sting was just recently made champion there's a good chance that we should do a champion coronation segment and we'll we'll book sting for that again it's a low intensity spot because he's just uh, uh, he's going to have this moment in the ring where he's celebrating and uh showing off the title and talking about the long road and that's when scott hall will come in and uh 
and and really give it to to Sting. Uh, I think maybe on this Nitro I can only have four segments. So I, even though I'd love to tell a little bit more story in this in this Nitro, I think it's really bad show to not have any wrestling on your wrestling show. So we're gonna book a match for this last one uh, or what I think is the last one and then we'll add more story if we can uh, as you level up your shows by doing well putting on good shows you get more time for these slots so by the end uh, by the end of a decade or so you know we'll be looking at seven slot shows or whatever but right now we're, we're still pretty early in this playthrough so when we haven't quite built the audience up where we, we need it to be just yet so uh, this is a good chance to maybe blow off one of these uh, feuds that isn't working so well or uh, isn't a, a real, like, a pay-per-view ending feud. Yeah, like, see, here, this match between Disco, uh, Disco, this feud between Disco Inferno and Norman St Smiley is definitely not a pay-per-view worthy match, at least not at this moment. Oh, but you know what? Let's put somebody in for the... Let's do a match for the TV tag, or the Nitro tag, Nitro belt instead. So, Chavo Guerrero is just recently got the title. He is not, um, he is not resonating with the audience well. You can see he's got a minus seven overness right now. So, let's do something real quick and see if we can change that, huh? We'll go to the roster. And we will find Chavo. And we're going to change his gimmick. Let's see. What would be good? He's a heel. But I don't know if we want to focus too hard on that. Because I don't know how long I'm going to keep him heel either. Uh, right now we shouldn't be getting any real penalties for anything. Because we it's so early in the game we haven't used anything. Uh, anything with these gray boxes we can't use yet. Because we haven't unlocked it. So if you wanted a game dev version of Chavo Guerrero, you're kind of out of luck. Or you could come down here and write Game Dev. But we're not going to do that. Let's see. I like Opportunist. That's that's pretty uh, that's that's pretty in character, I think. If we could get weird with it. Mm. Could put uh, wrestling family down there, and he could really try to. He could really be focusing in on his pedigree. Yeah, let's do this. Let's do. We're gonna do a custom one. We're gonna do. Uh, from a wrestling family. So I envision him coming out and giving promos, belittling the fans for not appreciating where he's come from and who his, who, whose blood runs through his blood, that kind of thing. You know, I've always heard uh, people say that if Eddie wasn't around and wasn't be Eddie, one, one of the all-time greats, you know, then, then Chavo might have shined a little bit more. But we're going to see if we can make him shine uh, on our show. So... Uh, he's from a wrestling family. Uh, we have an opportunity to change his look here. Uh, I see no real reason to do so. I don't think there's anything that would add to that. Yeah, we're going to leave his look alone. And I'm going to lock that in. So now, he, that's it hasn't deb debuted yet. It will debut automatically as part of this match. So this main match's purpose will be to put over Chavo Guerrero and to do it in a way that debuts his new gimmick. So we're looking for a good face, kind of in his, his wheelhouse. Uh, somebody who would be believably challenging for the, the, the Monday night title with him. Uh, the, the, basically the TV title. I'm going to go with Mike Awesome here. I picked somebody who is in the upper mid-card section to really hopefully 
give Chavo that extra push. So that's our main event for, for this episode of Nitro. I'm going to press book a segment, book segment here, and that'll tell us if we have any more segments we can book. We do. So we could book one more segment, at least one more segment. Um, I could do some story, or maybe I'll do another match. I think I'll do another match just to... Just to, it's a wrestling show. You gotta you gotta put on a, ma a wrestling match. I'm gonna do a tag team actually, a lower level tag team, and get some of these these um, lower mid cards some extra uh, time here. I've got uh, I one of my favorites so far has been the East Street Elite. Uh, they're comprised of Mi Smooth and Bob Sapp. M.I. Smooth was on the roster at the time of WCW's closure, and Bob Sapp was uh, getting ready to debut. So um, I I thought the I needed to get them over, and uh, I thought I'd tag them up. I'd tag them up. So we're gonna do East Street Elite. They are heels. I, if memory serves. And uh, Scottio and Air Paris, uh, my other rookies who I'm trying to uh, boot get over, you can see they're very similar in popularity right now in that they are not. <laughs> uh, but that would be a good candidate. But I'd really like to get East Street Elite some more movement. So I'm going to go... I think I'm going to have them beat sh three count. Sugar Shane ought to be comfortable taking this this loss because he just recently won the uh, cruiserweight championship belt. So the risks are relatively low. I'm going to go with three count. Uh, I, there's a little button here where I could press to add a feud and then I could just start a feud as a result of this match. I'm not going to because I don't see, well, you know what? Let's, let's do it. What's this feud about? Um, you can see the game pre-populates it with some some options. Over here, this button will randomize this one. So if you're not feeling particularly creative at a moment or you're at a loss, you can always just come over here and, and use this to, to uh, well, to just give you that little creative boost. So we're going to say that in this story segment, the East Street Elite, are calling out three count on the account of their bad singing and bad dancing because if right now three count is doing the boy band uh gimmick and uh you know what i'm just not a fan of that myself so i can come down here and type anything i want in here uh within reason of course character limits but uh your voice sucks voices there's multiples your voices suck so now we're seeing the start of a new a new uh feud here i'm trying to decide if i want to book mike awesome and chavo in an actual feud or no it'll just be a one-off all right, so we actually have even another one here. So if we got this many, let's book some more segments. I actually need uh, to put some production segments in here because I'm still trying to level up my producer. So we're going to do that. Um, I don't have anybody returning or debuting, so I can't utilize these. I think I'll highlight a, a feud. All of these are just really not doing great right now. I'm going to double down on Chavo tonight, though, and we're going to boost his. We're going to boost his his feud with Ernest Miller. That's that's heading towards a eventual an eventual pay per view uh, blowout of some kind. So we're going to give them shared. There, so and we'll book that just before just a little video vignette just before the main event and wow i'm still booking matches i have no idea why i'm being granted all these extra matches i'm used to having like four i must have leveled that up and not remembered but um so we're gonna put another match on here you know what um uh, let's let's book something something 
here. I want Scott Hall to look strong enough to be a viable competitor to Sting. So I think I'm going to book him in just a... Uh, I'm going to book him in an open challenge match. And that will be right there. And so the game is going to randomly choose the person that Scott Hall fights. I'm essentially planning on making him win against anybody short of, say, Sting showing up for the open challenge. All right, so there we go. Seven seven segments. We've hit our limit for this one, so now we have only one more option we can do, and that's play event. So now this is where you get to see the matchups and you get to decide who's going to win. If you're not the type of person who wants to decide the victory, there is a simulate button. I'm planning on choosing, but uh, please provide feedback if you are not loving that. You know, I I could see there being some fun just by running simulations too. So uh, we'll we'll uh, play that by ear. So I'm going to let East Street Elite win. They get plus four to their well, where to go? They they gained popularity and they they lost. Oh. It's going quick. So Scott Hall's interrupting. We'll see at the end if, uh, let's see. Okay, so now it's paused here. The segments will autoplay and they, they have a tendency to just fly by. So you have to kind of look down at the results here. So you can see it's well received. That match was really, really poorly uh, received. Uh, we expected that. It's not, it's not ideal that we've started this um, feud at negative three that's pretty that's kind of a bummer but you know that's the challenge we got to figure out how to make it interesting so uh, champion coronation uh that that went well uh scott hall interrupting went really well although it doesn't seem like they have started a feud that's one of my criticisms of the game right now the consequences one don't give you the option to to book feuds and so or to force feuds to start so i have a tendency to um start a uh, start feuds with a match and then do a bunch of story segments and then do like blow off matches uh, just because that's how that's how i've had to do it but we're going to try to use the in-game consequence thing just to make it interesting so we're going to see where that takes us back to the story at hand here's our our segment where kaz uh, Kaz is about to turn on Young. Uh, they they were they did recently they were wearing similar outfits as part of their um, part of their tag team. Though they have just both recently over undergone uh, overhauls as part of this new storyline. So here we go. Kaz turns gets a good twelve bonus to his his uh, popularity. That was a good. That was good to Hall. Speaking of Hall, Scott Hall is going to fight Chris Harris. This is an easy no-brainer. Scott Hall is the star here, 97%. He's, I'm trying to build him up to a spot where he's believable in a match against Sting for the title. And Chris Harris um, recently debuted uh, mid-card guy. I don't, I don't even know if he's mid-card. He might be lower mid-card. Not, not anybody's favorite. So this is an easy squash right now. I could have gone gotten a little bit more interesting with it and made Chris win the surprise victory, but it really kind of downplays our plans for, for undermines our plans for Scott Hall at this moment. But plans change. So here's Monday, the Monday Nitro Championship match, and Chavo is going to win easily. See minus two twelve for Mike and plus ten for Chavo. So it did its job. It 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 grew the person we were trying to grow. You can see Kaz is Kaz, Kaz. I will look that up before the next video, I promise. I'm so sorry. That is so awful. Uh, Kaz is starting to get over at the fans. Uh, he is uh, just part of this tag team push and then this turn 
obviously big big things expected from him his aggressive lunatic gimmick uh, that i just gave him as part of the story has really been uh really did a good job that gave him a big boost in overness and that's really going to help his momentum uh this the, the gimmick change for chavo went over really well that's been gonna that's gonna be really good for momentum and Sh shannon morse pop singer gimmick declined and i guess i should have expected that i literally titled this segment you suck essentially and complained about it myself so why why would i be surprised by this so uh and here's the breakdown of the rest of the match the crowd was really really not into chavo versus awesome um though i have a i have reason to believe that with the gimmick change we might get a better result uh, next with the next match here so that's the and then here's the experience every time you use something you get a little experience for it as long as you, it went well and once you fill up the bar this changes from bronze to silver to gold and uh, the cost to use it in in creative points goes down, and the hype boost. Uh, well, I can't show you, but the hype boost for that particular type goes up. So that would mean that neck, uh, if uh, champion coronation levels up to silver, that means the next time you use it on nitro, it's going to automatically go over better than this one did so uh, you have got a lot of motivation to mix and match what you're using so i've got two emails we're gonna go take a look at those ernest miller's getting unhappy booker t's unhappy now that's a little concerning so i can book them in matches for uh on nitro but it doesn't really most of the time it's not enough to really uh improve their morale so We've got one more show before Halloween Havoc. I think we're just gonna we're gonna book Booker T in something and let him win now, and maybe set up a feud for ha Halloween Havoc, and we're going to have him win at Halloween Havoc, and that will make sure he's happy. I'm a little less concerned about Ernest Miller being happy. I don't know how to handle that because if he wins, he's gonna take the title away from Chavo real quick because he's in a feud of Chavo, and Chavo's just got the belt. But if he loses he's going to leave the company so i think we're going to have to do something something interesting with that a tag match or something but we'll we'll cross that bridge when we get there i'm probably over narrating my thought process but eh. so like i said i want booker t in he's definitely going to win some match let's see jeff jarrett I've always liked their chemistry. I think they they seem like natural rivals and have the good chemistry in the ring, in real life and in the game here. Yeah, we're gonna book uh, we're gonna book a feud here. I don't want to book Ungrateful, even though it's one of the unique ones that's set up because Booker T's unhappy and Jeff Jarrett's happy right now. But for me, the heel, the the face character should never be booked in an unhappy versus happy match. If it was the other way around, I would totally pick this right now. But we're going to go with something else here. We're going to say... We're going to call it Vicious Mockery in an O2. Wow. <laughs> A D&D &D bard move. But it, uh, in story here, we're going to say it's uh, Jeff Jarrett is giving Booker T crap about how much he's losing and how weak he's been more or less booked recently. So we got that segment going. I really want to see. Yeah, we didn't get a chance to get Rick. Let's see. Still nothing with Sting, so we're going to book another thing that another consequence and see what happens. We big, booked promo battle last time and it didn't work out for us, so let's see. How about we do? Oh, hmm. 
No, it needs to be bigger than that now. They get in a fight. We're going to increase the intensity here because now Scott Hall's mad. Sting did not take him seriously uh, and his threats. And now we're we're really going to see it now. We're, we're going to book it as shared. I don't want anybody to get too much of the upper hand over e e anybody. It's got to be booked pretty evenly. So we're going to go with that. I really need to see what's going on with my tag team situation. I can't remember. The Boogie Knights are our current champions. Um, they don't have a feud going. Um, I can tell because if you do have a feud going, I don't have any tag feuds going. Okay, so if you do have a feud going, it highlights the uh, person you're feuding with in red. So that gives you a little bit of a tip. So let's see. Boogie Nights should be... I really don't want Rey Mysterio and Billy Kidman to leave. Uh, they're more important to my long-term plan plans than Disco Inferno and Alex Wright, probably. Nothing against either of them. Just Disco is Disco, and I can't take him seriously. Uh, he has his purpose, but not main event purposes. And... Alex Wright was a main eventer in my last save, so I'm probably just going to avoid doing it again just for redundancy's sake. So uh, it's really important to me, though, that we we have a good showing for uh, for Ray and Billy Kidman. And I've I've tried to sign Conan. I would like to add him to my filthy animal trio here, but uh, he has been re rejecting my my efforts so far. Actually, we should go make sure that that's still ongoing. So here's who I can sign outright without even, without any effort. I can just spend my creative points and do it. And all these people require additional uh, work. So let's see, let's find Conan. Here's Conan. Uh, I have to scout him just to even find out anything about him. I'm gonna cheat a little bit here. I know who Conan is. I have made this scenario. I'm going to recruit him. Nope, forgot we got the Roderick Strong happening, and they can only work on one thing at once. So we're going to go back to the, back to the show. Sorry. Ernest Miller versus Chavo. We should further that story and see if it's got any chance of... Well, shoot. That's the one I'm worried about at the pay-per-view. You know, we're just going to book it anyway. There. Oh, we could move them on. We're going to say, I could turn Chavo face here. I'm not going to do that. Let's do, we're going to say mutual respect. They're going to come out and decide that uh, they got off on the wrong foot and they actually like each other okay. And it's a little bit of a cop out, but I do need to level these anyway. And I really do not want to uh, accidentally piss off Ernest Miller at the pay-per-view uh, tomorrow. So, let's see. Let's have... I really need some bigger, some big names on the pay-per-view. I don't have any good marquee matches lined up for tomorrow's Halloween Havoc which is one of my biggest pay-per-views of the year, and I literally don't even have a main event feud. I really left the game in shambles last time I, I, <laughs> I paused the game. Let's see, Faye, my, let's get Diamond Dallas Page in a feud with Ric Flair. This will just be for entertainment. Let's see, we'll say... Smack talk here uh, between the two of them. And we're going to book another match in here. So I don't actually have, let's see. I do have Booker T versus Jeff Jarrett. That's a pretty good main event for tonight. Maybe I'll leave it at. We'll do Chavo and. You know what? 
I really don't like humorous. So we're going to do this. And then afterwards, that's when Chava or Ernest Miller is going to come out and say, you know what? I, I really don't like, uh, I really don't like Hugh Morris either. Uh, you gave him a good ass whipping. So here's, here's mutual respect for me. And if I have any more segments left, I don't. Okay. So let's see. We're going to start the show with Fifthly Animals versus Boogie Nights. Let's get that feud going. Mm, what do I want to do here? New challengers. They are they're the new new challengers for the Boogie Knights. And you know what? I think they might have a chance of just taking it right now because I really want to make sure that I don't leave the, lose them and Yeah, let's just do this. Boogie Knights are tag team champions of the world. Losing quickly to Filthy Animals on Monday Nitro. Rey Mysterio Jr. is starting to get over with the fans. That's that's pretty great. I need uh, I need some more stars. So Ric Flair and Diamond Dallas Page are in the ring. It's a shared uh, segment, but I get to kind of choose who got the upper hand. For my money, though, you can never out talk the man. Chavo kicks Hugh Morris's ass. You know what? You know the only thing worse than Hugh Morris would be. Um, sorry, huge erection. That is the worst gimmick ever. So the rest of our segments were going well. I was trying to remember that name. We got uh, the blow off. Didn't go well, as you can expect. I mean, the, I built something up for at least a couple of weeks there on the. Didn't even finish it. I'm pulling out all the WCW stops here. But uh, when my hands felt kind of tied behind my back there. Uh, Scott Hall and Sting still not uh, hitting it off in a feud. So, you know, I'm just going to have to book them cold if we want to do that. Maybe we'll do that. We're going to be flying by the seat of our pants for this Halloween Havoc. Um, um, Booker T is going to win here. Pretty good, pretty good Nitro overall. Uh, just 12 points. This is the, my favorite number to look at at the end because it gives you a good sense overall of how the show was. Um, obviously, there's no shortage of different stats and numbers we could, we could watch, we could look at here. Ooh, I got a training roster call up. Steve Carino. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So now we have Steve Carino. Booker T is really excited that we gave him that win. Um, let's see. So we have three events. We're not going to book Steve Carino here. We're going to wait until Monday Nitro so we can use the debut uh, segment as I haven't used it yet and I really need to start leveling it. Um, let's start with a couple of the people I don't want to forget bookings for. We're going to book, book the Filthy Animals. Let's see. It's got to be a big match because I don't even have a good feud going. We're going to say a TLC, TL, TLC match between the currently feud... No, the Boogie Knights. You know what? That's, that's good. That'll be a good match. Uh, and we'll just... That'll be the blow-off match. Uh, the Jung Dragons. Young Dragons, Jung Dragons. Shit. I'm so sorry. That's so embarrassing. Um, they're going to have their first their first fight here. You can see it's automatically suggesting the fighting the darkness feud as a result of the feud segment of our of our turn. So Young Yang is essentially asking Kaz, Kaz to, to to don't do this. Think about all we've meant to each other, etc. So. That'll be a really good match. I'm expecting Kaz to get the upper hand now, and I see this this feud going until Starcade, where Young Young Yang will probably get the final blow off. But 
We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, my main event. You see, I still don't. I still didn't get a feud uh, going, so I'm gonna have to really get weird with it and get a potential boost for an I Quit match. So I think we'll do I Quit between Sting and Scott Hall. I think that'll be an excellent match. You know what? No, no. Let's do this. Uh, Scott Hall versus uh, Shawn Michaels for th for that ladder match in uh, oh I can't remember when that was now but way back back in the early nineties was one of the greatest matches of all time. Let's book let's book another ladder match with Scott Hall. I never think about Sting when I think about ladder matches, but uh, you know gotta. Let's make it, got to put it all on the line. Oh, so I could force a feud here. I'm not going to do that because I expect this to, at this point now, be a one and done match. So we're going to avoid that. Uh, I didn't get the, bo the feud booked between Ric Flair and Diamond Dallas Page. So again, if I book this, I just got to kind of book it cold. That's not ideal either. I don't have a lot of main big stories going into this, and that's a problem. We're going to go ahead and do book this, and we're going to force the feud to happen here. Mm. We're going to call this feud. Oh, I don't want to retire Ric Flair yet. But that would give Diamond Dallas Page a huge boost. But you know what? He's so old. I don't need him to be that, that boosted. We're going to just say this is just a general who's the better wrestler feud. Oh, and they had a hot previous feud back from, uh, it was a title match, I forgot. So this is really kind of their um, their rematch from, from, the, from that feud. That's, that's good. I, I forgot about that. That's pretty exciting. I, I like that. I'm going to start booking Scott, uh, Scott Steiner um, strong because I expect to have to use him in, uh, as fodder for Sting. So... I'm going to book him to beat Scott Steiner. I'm going to book Ernest Miller in a match against literally anybody at this point. Just this this is this is bad booking. This is um this is but I I have no choice. I got to get him in a match with somebody and let him win just so he stays happy. Uh the Kiss Demon Got no use for the Kiss Demon. So you know what? Maybe this is the start of a f of uh, of a feud. The Kiss Demon, the hard rock and roll, versus Ernest Miller and his uh, his soul his his soul and blues rhythm and blues music. So your taste? No, I just did your taste of music. Sucks. We'll label it Rock versus Soul. There we go. Rock versus Soul. And now I'm excited about that storyline. You know what? Let's make this a story. Because uh, neither one of them have anything going on right now. So this is just going to be an old grudge match from... Uh, they were... They fought on the final night of champions, which is what they called uh, the very last Nitro. So we're going to say this is a grudge match going back to the very last Nitro. Oh, but we just recently held a feud. Okay, no feud here. It's just a one-off, I guess. Oh, that's just such bad booking. But, you know what? It'll put butts in seats, so let's just go for it. I want to book Chavo to win against... Darn, I don't... Ooh. That's a good one. This would be a good feud. Here we go. Stepping up. This is Chavo Grow trying to prove he's big enough. He's he's ready. He's ready for, for bigger, bigger chances. And... Shane... Sugar Shane is going to defend his, his Cruiserweight title in a... 
multi-person ladder match. You know what? Not a ladder match. We've already got a ladder match tonight. I don't want to... Let's just say just a multi-match. A multi -match, A multi-person match. Versus... Hmm. We could start AJ's rise to to fame. It's really a cruiserweight though. We're gonna go Norman smiling. We're gonna go with give Elix some some screen time. We'll give. Good lord, none of these people are over. At in the slightest. Oh. Oh, it's so painful. Okay, so let's not do him. Let's do... Johnny the Bull, because at least he's got some overness. And... Yeah, if I can't find any more scrubs, this is already going to not be as good a match as I was hoping for, so... Alright, what else can I book? I need to get some more people in. Let's see. Uh, you know what? I think I saw that Bam Bam, Bam Bam Bigelow was unhappy. Let's book him. Keep him happy. I'm not in a position to lose upper mid-carters mid just yet. We're going to start a feud between these two. Um... We're gonna say that Sean Stasiak in his his perfect his perfect prima donna uh, attitude is clashing with Bam Bam Bigelow's gruff, gross, gritty, jersey tattooed style. We're gonna call this tattoo taboo. I'm gonna keep booking Crowbar because he's my my heir apparent in this game uh, for this session. It's what's real fun funny about this is when I was a kid and I was actually watching Crowbar. I really did not like him one bit. Um, you know, I think just a simple match between Crowbar and Buff, actually a feud between these two. Um, it's just gonna be a simple better wrestler feud because ah. Oh, Nope, a feud was recently held. Okay. This is what happens when I take a break between a long break between sessions. I can't remember what I booked. Let's get AJ in there. Oh. Let's just finish. Let's just blow this up. This is gonna be oh. Oh, that's such a bad match though. I can't I can't put that match out there. That's gonna be the worst match of the worst match of the year. I can't not on one of my biggest pay per views. You can see the issues I have. Real, real issues with viable talent in this spot. Um, let's do Lance Storm, who's on a roll. Getting a feud with Mike Awesome, because I think that will really bring him up. Um, I'm just going to go for a simple disrespect storyline here. So he's going to win, uh, Mike Austin's going to win this first match, and that's going to piss off Storm, and they're going to get into a long feud as part of that. All right, so now we're going to take one last look at this, make sure we like it, and rearrange it, because there's no way I want this up here, down there. Booker T versus Scott Steiner, that's a good match. Uh, this is going to be one of my favorite matches of the show. Diamond Dallas Page versus Ric Flair. That one needs to be way up there. You know, maybe we'll put that there just to mix up the tag and single matches a little. And let's see. We'll open it with... We'll open it with the Kiss Demon and Ernest Miller match. So... On pay-per-views, you only get matches, no story segments, in case you're wondering why we're doing all matches. That's, well, that's the reason. So, so play event. Uh, 
Ernest Miller is going to get the win here. Bam Bam Bigelow is going to get the win here. I intended to book Shane to win here, but I do like Norman Smiley. And it would give me a good chance to really push one of these, these kids up. You know what? Sugar Shane is the more talented star. Two, two work rate, two charisma. One work rate, two charisma. One work rate, one charisma. One work rate, two charisma. So it's just... It seems... Um, yeah, let's book Shane to win. At least for another, another pay-per-view. Mike Awesome is going to get the surprise victory over Lance Storm. That's going to really piss him off. Chavo is going to get the surprise victory over Ming. And the filthy animals are going to retain. Kaz is going to get the f draw first blood on his former partner. Scott Steiner is starting to be book strong. Oh, you see that down there? Ray Mysterio got hurt. Damn it. Right. Uh, and there's really no wrong answer here. They're both huge stars and neither have anything to gain. This is literally just to bring up the entertainment value of the whole show. We're going to go with Diamond, Dal Diamond Dallas Page just because go with the baby face. And Sting is going to win. So, Ray got hurt, and the Filthy Animals have temporarily disbanded. That's not ideal. Stasiak decreased from uh, average overness to not popular. Not ideal. Lance Storm decreased. Lance Storm is actually no longer over. The fans are not really digging him. I got to work to turn that around. I was not expecting that big of a decrease. Uh... Scott Steiner uh, improved. He's got a good uh, his overness has increased. So this is this is doing exactly what I needed it to do and giving me a potential uh, feud partner here for Sting. I really feel backed into a corner because I don't. There's no no care, no workers right here where I would like as my champion. I didn't necessarily want Sting as my current champion, but I don't have anybody who's like speaking to me as you are the new champion. So we're, we're working to figure out who that is. Uh, all the different feud information updates. Uh, and the TLC match did well enough that the event uh, value increased. The tag champions championships were vacated as part of uh, the injury. So now we're going to have to figure out, we're going to have to hold a, a tournament for that. Scott Steiner's on his way to becoming face of the company. That's going to be great. Sting through Scott Hall face first into a ladder set up in the corner. The fans are going crazy. I got some extra creative points for that. And Sting got an overness boost. The ladder match effect that boosted. And uh, it looks like Roderick Strong got, a, got promoted. So here's the overall match breakdown. It's about what we were expecting. Actually, Bam Bam and, Sh Bam Bam and Sean Stasiak where it was a much better show than, than I thought. And you can see the 34 feud, that's going to be a pretty fun story going further. Um, Chavo Ming, still, no, still nobody's buying Chavo. I might have to take the title off him here soon if it doesn't start to click because it just can't, I can't keep throwing other people at him trying to make him work. So we'll, we'll, we'll play that by ear. Filthy Animals doing good except for the injury of course this will bring up this will retain uh until until he return from the fight so that will actually bring boost their feud the kaz story is not quite as interesting as i was expecting it to be scott steiner the match was scott steiner booker t was definitely the match of the night there you can see uh five and uh, three quarter stars or one two three four five yeah so really happy with that Better Diamond Dallas Page and Ric Flair. Their storyline is is hot. Seventy seven. That was a good match. That was a good story. Between them duking it out to see who's real. They're actually better. And uh, not a horrible main event, even if it was kind of uneventful. So plus twenty one. Not the biggest boost, but con considering how much I had prepared for Halloween Havoc, it was. I will take it. <laughs> it could have ended up way worse. 
So here's uh, the spectator reports. At this point, I've played the game enough that I don't really read them, but um, you can see it gives you it gives you your uh, um, competitor news. It gives you some of your news. It can give you some uh, some hints about some matches that might win awards at the end of the year. Um, it tells you a few other things too, but that's that's what I had here. So I got seven emails. Let's go take a look at those. I got. I could sign Glacier if I wanted. Uh, I'm probably gonna pass. Kevin Nash's torn knee ligament has been evaluated from three to seven to three to five months. So we're gonna get him a little sooner. That's not the that's that's good news. Um, Ernest Miller's no longer unhappy. Bam Bam's no longer unhappy. Rey Mysterio's no longer unhappy, which is really alarming. Consider. Ray Mysterio's injury was diagnosed as a fractured ankle, and he will return in four to six months. I don't know about you, but I feel like I would definitely be more unhappy from a fractured ankle. But um, All right, so that is our first test session of Jow, or my Jow live stream here. I don't have a fancy fun name for it yet. Um, it was probably a little bit more slow paced than I expect the most of them from now on. I expect to kind of go through a lot of matches, a lot of uh, um, uh, segments or events really quick. I just really wanted to lay some groundwork on what I'm doing and what the game is for people who are not quite as familiar because I know that Jow is a relatively new game and uh, it's a really fun game. It's really, really, really worth you checking out. Please please spend some time go try it at journeyofwrestling.com and subscribe. And if I do more of these, you'll be the first to know. And thanks for watching and uh, have a good one.